One Del Mar candidate calls the tunnel options devastating to the community. Here's all the bells and whistles. Hello everyone, Bill Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Railway Track and Structures Media, with a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending October 14th. The U.S. DOT's Federal Highway Administration announced the first round of grants from President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure laws competitive bridge investment program. These early planning grants going to 23 projects in 23 states will help fund early phases of project development to create a pipeline of bridge construction projects, one of many ways in which the bipartisan infrastructure law will help build, repair, and replace tens of thousands of bridges in communities across the country. In total, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Laws Bridge Investment Program will make the single largest dedicated investment in bridges, $12.5 billion over five years, since the construction of the interstate highway system. LCN Phyllis, two huge tunnel boring machines named after distinguished women in British Columbia history, are set to work on the Metropolitan Vancouver Broadway Subway project. LC has already started tunneling, and Phyllis is expected to begin in early 2023. These tunnel boring machines will move independently and will require about a year to complete the work. The project will add three and a half miles to the SkyTrain Millennium Line from the VC Clark Station to Broadway, then Artibus. Total funding for the project, about $2.3 billion, will be shared by the Government of British Columbia, the Government of Canada, and the City of Vancouver. The intersection of South Sable Boulevard and East Exposition Avenue in Aurora, Colorado, is more like a tripwire for RTD train operators. It has been the spot of two derailments over the last four years, with the last one coming a few weeks ago. When the train left the tracks at that spot back in 2019, the train operator was charged with speeding. RTD has not completed its investigation with the latest accident, but train operators and officials believe the problem could be with the track. Train operators say it can be difficult to come off straightaways and then slow down for the curves. Dealing with obstacles involved when being mixed in with street traffic make the task even trickier. It was no surprise that track relocation was a hot-button topic during a recent forum of those running for Del Mar City Council. The line that runs along the bluffs is at consistent risk of being damaged due to ground settlement and erosion. Del Mar Mayor Dwight Worden, Councilmember Terry Gosterland, and candidate Stephen Quirk are all running for two at-large seats on the council, and the three offered their insight on moving the track further inland. The San Diego Association of Governments said it wants to build the new line on one of two routes, the Camino del Mar route or the Del Mar Heights route. Both Gosterlin and Quirk want Sandag to offer more options for the track move. Quirk added the two options would present, quote, devastating tunnels, unquote, that would be destructive to the community for decades. <laughs> 